Stefan Molyneux's YouTube channel being deleted is bad news for everyone. Don't raise it! When I say it's bad news for everyone, I include his detractors in that. So let's start with that. Let's start with his detractors and why some people who disagree with Stefan Molyneux might want to have him banned and why I think that even for those people, uh, it's not a good idea to remove him from the platform where you are going to be speaking and trying to do battle with ideas like his. One of the first things you'll read about Stefan Molyneux if you do a quick Google search, particularly over the last few days as uh, articles try to explain the reasons why uh, he was banned from YouTube, uh, one of the first things that you'll read is that he was or is a white supremacist. Now, I don't actually believe that he is a white supremacist, and I'll get into why in a moment or two. But let's imagine that he were, beyond all doubt, a white supremacist. You would have fairly reasonable grounds to want him banned from uh, the public discussion. No, I suppose you could say, even if you're an advocate for free speech, you could say it's incitement of hatred which could lead to violence or, or even incitement to violence. No, you're a white supremacist. You believe that by birth you have a greater claim to uh, or you have extra human rights that people of another race do not have because you are superior. So a white supremacist's ideology would seek to legitimize violence towards other races. I would say even in those cases when you get people who believe that one race is superior to another, so long as they are not explicitly inciting violence, I think that a better course of action rather than banishing them from the public square is to counter-argue. I'd say that maybe YouTube could do something with their algorithm to try and uh, make videos show up which, which disagree with the one you're currently watching. That, to me, would seem like a more logical course of action than forcing these people underground. As I've said, I don't think Stefan Molyneux is a white supremacist, and I'm going to get into that in a minute. But just for argument's sake, hypothetically, if he were a white supremacist, if he were making the claim that white people uh, were superior to other races, then it isn't a good idea to force these things into the counterculture so directly. Because if you have a platform where everyone agrees with each other, the next generation are going to look for something cooler than that. It's not going to be cool to follow the zeitgeist. It never is. The counterculture is always more influential than the mainstream. If you believe that the only way to uh, defeat these ideas is by covering them up and pushing them away from mainstream media and mainstream platforms, then I would argue that you're wrong. That's not the way to defeat them. The way to defeat them is by doing battle with them, right? So white supremacy. Imagine what an easy sell it is to say, oh, the mainstream media have uh, blocked us. Uh, we've had our Facebook group deleted. It's because they don't want you to know X, Y, Z. Hmm? So imagine if they have to come out into the public square and argue with scientists, uh, with rational thinkers, uh, with uh, centrist politicians, they have to argue that one race should be treated preferentially by law uh, over another. It's not going to last very long, that ideology. That, that, that's going to die pretty quickly on the, on, the, on the sand. So to me, I think it's a good idea to tolerate all forms of speech that do not explicitly incite violence. Having said that, uh, obviously as an individual there is a limit to the amount of bullshit you can take and so when somebody does start to say that institutionalised prejudice is a good idea uh, then it's often a good idea to walk away from the conversation because you're probably talking to someone who's not going to be easily uh, brought back from uh, beyond the looking glass. That does segue, however, quite neatly into what I want to talk about next, which is this attitude of YouTube's a private company, man. They can ban who they want. Mm, yes and no. I find that to be such a cynical, Machiavellian argument, <laughs> especially as it's coming primarily from left-wing people. Oh boy, if the tables were turned. While it's technically true, yeah, they can just ban someone on a whim. I don't think you should be saying that so triumphantly. Nobody wants to stay on a platform that's so volatile. They need to give a clear reason when they do things like that. And I do find it really cynical when vehement opponents of free market politics suddenly defend the rights of mega corporations. I mean, just look at how violent and hysterical uh, certain sections of the left already are. Imagine if Silicon Valley was against them and was closing all their accounts because they didn't like the 
thoughts they were having uh, and expressing. I mean, sh sh surely, surely the same left-wing people would not be coming out then to defend the Silicon Valley mega corporations' right to ban whoever they wanted without giving a coherent reason. So I guess with that, I should get onto my defense of the individual uh, to whom this video is dedicated, Stefan Molyneux, and why I don't think he is such a deplorable character as he is being made out to be. The main accusation leveled at Stefan Molyneux is that he is a racist, that he's a white supremacist. And I, as I've said several times in this video, do not believe that to be true because I don't think that at any point over the thousands of videos that he's made on YouTube since 2006, over 14 years, I don't believe, I could be wrong again, it's not like I've seen all of his videos, I don't believe that at any point he has explicitly said, uh, nor do I think that he believes that um, white people are superior to other races. What he has done is spoken quite a bit about race and IQ and the average scores, the average IQ scores uh, between different races and different racial groups. So, uh, yeah, if someone raised that at a dinner party, you'd sort of go, why the hell are they talking about that, right? But he does a pretty good job of defending why he speaks about that. He says that it's so that we understand that when there is a difference in result in outcome between different racial groups, we can understand uh, that it's not just because of uh, prejudice and racism, uh, which, again, could be a factor. I mean, there's, there's always going to be, there's, you know, there's always going to be many, many factors in, in, as to the reason as why uh, someone ascends to a certain position, say, in a corporation. Uh, but why are we not going to see all of the races perfectly, proportionately represented in perceived positions of power? Well, he argues that IQ is going to be very important, certainly for certain sectors, you know, CEOs of major companies. And it is Stefan Molyneux's belief, rightly or wrongly, that certain races are going to be overrepresented, certain other races are going to be underrepresented in those perceived positions of power. And that there is not much we can do about that other than treating each person as an individual and completely forgetting their intersectional makeup. It's essentially a counter-argument to affirmative action, his stance. He believes that we should treat people as individuals in a society that, to the point that it is possible, we should give them equality of opportunities. That All individuals should be guaranteed the same constitutional rights, but that it is a grave error to treat people primarily as a member of their group rather than primarily as an individual. That telling people that belonging to one group or another is going to give them a massive disadvantage in life actually does give them a massive disadvantage in life. That you cannot empower an individual to take control of their own life if you're telling them that it's impossible to get where they want to go because of their race or their gender. If that is all that they can pin on him, I honestly think that that's academically defensible. Um, I don't know. Maybe somebody can convince me otherwise. I'm willing to listen.